Hi everyone, my name is Peter Faria and welcome back to another Day in the Wild episode hosted by Data Mini. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the channel below, click on the bell to turn on the notifications to be the first to know every time we upload a new video. Today, we're going to be talking about Altrix and UiPath integration. So the very first thing I'm going to do is make sure that I have the proper package downloaded. So I'll just search for all packages, Altrix, and then I'll make sure to actually install the correct package. So we can install and save. After installation is complete, what I'm going to do is search for any Altrex activity and then you can see that we can see the Altrex application scope. First step is to drag it in and there you go. So this over here will allow us to connect UiPath and the Altrex Gallery API. So you're going to be able to build out different workflows to the different things, get a job, get a job result, uh, just run a specific workflow. You can be able to do quite a lot of different things. But the very first thing that we have to do is actually configure everything. So we're going to be needing to input our base URL, so your gallery URL, your client ID, and your client secret. And the same information in a form of variable will be uh, placed on the left, on the right hand side of here. So, Peter, where do I find the information that I need to place over here? Well, when you go to your gallery, you're going to be able to see under your profile, your keys, of course, your URL as well. So you can be leveraging your API asset access keys to be able to use UiPath and Altrix together. So after you actually input all the information, you're going to be needing just test connection. And then there you go. Just as a reminder, on the left hand side, you're going to be putting everything and just simply straight out copy and pasting. And on the right hand side, the best practice is to use variables. So you're just going to be creating variables with the same values that you can see over here. After inputting your values, you should test the connection, as I mentioned before, and then you can see connection was successful. So that means that right now your Altrix and UiPath are connected. Next step is to make sure that you populate on the right hand side with the variables that you have created. The one thing to be aware is your API secret key must be a secure string variable type. After you have created all your variables, you can see that now we don't have an error anymore showing up for the Altrix application scope. So that means that we're able to now begin the actual process itself, right? So for our process today, all I want to do is just simply get workflows, right? So I'll be using the get workflows variables and I'll just place it over here. So this specific action over here. Well, I can do quite a lot, but the one thing to watch out is you need to make sure that you input in your workflows and you can see it is an array. So you need to create the variable workflows as an array and then make that be the output of your get workflows action. As you create your workflows variable, make sure to select the variable type as an array. So array of T, this is going to be asking you to select the actual type. Well, for this, we're going to be browsing for types and looking for an Altrix workflow. So search for Altrix, search for workflow. And then as you scroll down, you should see your Altrix variables that you can actually select. Workflow, then OK. I'll hit OK. And then you can see the arrow goes away as well. So right now, we're just going to be extracting all the workflows inside of that specific gallery, right? And it's going to be showing up for us as an array. So what I'm going to do is simply write out the workflow IDs, right? So what I'm going to be doing is 
using a for each row approach, I'll be just writing out the actual name of the ID itself. For this, I'm going to add a for each action. So for each, for each item inside of workflows, workflows, I'll be doing something specific. So I want to assign the value of each item as an app ID because I want to proper name all of the values. So for this, I'm going to assign that each item ID matches what I call the app ID. So I'll be using the item dot ID variable. And right now you see it doesn't quite work. But let me show exactly how we can actually fix this. Making sure the workflow variable applies for all workflow scope, as well as updating the type argument. Because since we're dealing with a specific variable type as a workflow, we need to make sure that our workflow type matches not just workflow. So for this, you should be able to click over here and then you can see the uipath.altrix.workflow variable. Then you can click on it and then you're going to be able to proceed from this point on. The next step would be to create the actual app ID variable, right? So I'll be calling this app ID. We'll now proceed to write individually every single app ID from our workflows array. So for this, I'll just use the right line. Just to show you guys that we can actually see uh, our app IDs coming through. So I'll simply just use the app ID variable. And then for this, I'll just use the debug option. So I can show you guys that it actually works. And you can see on the left hand side, all the app IDs getting written. So I can even expand this a little bit. Then after running, you can see over here, they were able to list every single app ID on our gallery. So this is how you begin to incorporate Altrix and UiPath together. Thank you so much for your time. See you guys next time. Bye bye. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please comment them below. Don't forget to subscribe to know when future videos are posted. Thank you for watching.